This is Dr. Amel Drizi, and in this video, we are providing a hysteroscopic demonstration of the fourth ostium defining the upper limit of the uterine isthmus. To date, all the books and references of hysteroscopy define three ostia as landmarks for the uterine anatomy. External os of the cervix, also termed external uterine os, internal os of the cervix, named internal uterine os, and tubal ostia. The two first ostia delimitate the cervical canal, the two last ones the uterine cavity. Cervical canal and uterine cavity are lined with a different mucosa, endocervical mucosa for the cervix and demetrial one for the uterine cavity. Different mucosa, different histology. In anatomy, the internal uterine os, or the internal os of the cervix, is also termed internal uterine histological os, actually because it is the one marking transition from typical cervical mucosa to endometrial one. Endometrial mucosa marks uterine cavity, the lower segment of the uterine cavity is the uterine isthmus. Uterine isthmus. Its lower limit is the histological os. Its upper limit is the internal uterine anatomical os. Histological os and anatomical one. The region that lies between the two is the uterine isthmus about 6 to 10 millimeters only. The anatomical os has only been described in anatomy, never in hysteroscopy. It is also termed the orificium ismi superius. In an article published in the Trocar's first issue by December 2020, this fourth ostium is demonstrated for the first time in the literature thus clearly delimitating the uterine isthmus as a separate entity. Yet, this ostium is not always visible in all patients. In the case where it is not visible, the term internum os is to be used. In this video, we are demonstrating these new landmarks in different patients. The easier situation is when there is a caesarean section scar or an isomocell, like in this first patient. An isomocell literally means a pouch inside the isthmus. The uterine isthmus is distended by an isomocell in this case and lies between the two ostia, anatomical os, the histological os, uterine isthmus. Another patient without a history of caesarean section, nulli gravida primary infertility. The anatomical os, the histological os, uterine isthmus. As the isthmic region is about 6 to 10 millimeters length, we need to navigate very slowly if we don't want to miss the anatomical os. Another patient, G2P2, the anatomical os is less visible here. One needs to be more careful. The anatomical os, the histological os, uterine isthmus. Another patient, the anatomical os, the histological os, uterine isthmus.
Again, to demonstrate the second ostium of the isthmus, it is very important to enter the cavity in a slow and gentle fashion. Otherwise, the odds of missing it are great. I look forward to viewing ismic images from colleagues. Thank you for your attention.